everyone welcome back to rts and welcome back to another start to finish video and we are still playing with the load prompts so even though it's now march i'm still playing with prompts that i got in a class in february and that is okay i say make them last as long as you can i try to stretch them out till may to the next one so just have fun with them just gives you something of an idea of what to scrap when you don't know what to scrap so uh, i am going to work on a load prompt and and of course the theme was ruby red scissors from the wizard of oz and so our prompt today was there's no place like home <laughs> oh yes so many things you can do with that prompt and so of course the story that alice gave us the story idea was to scrapbook about your home or a place that feels like home see you can do so many things with that prompt and then the technique was in honor of dorothy's blue and white gingham dress use blue and white on a page. So you see how just with that one daily prompt, there is so many layouts you can do with that. And that's why like the load event, you get a lot of ideas. And so what I decided to do was I am going to do a two page layout using about 12 to 14 photos. I have a couple here to my left I can't show about my little one and her uh, preparing and buying things for her home someday soon. Uh, whenever that will be. Uh, and so I absolutely knew that I had a flare button that said, there's no place like home. <laughs> and that's exactly what I found. So I went to my flare binder and this is what I say when you have things organized where you can get to things quickly, you know, that 30 second rule. And I found that flare in under 30 seconds. And is that perfect? And it says there's no place like home. And I'm absolutely going to use that item on my page. So that was the starter. And then what I did is I grabbed a Cartabella line called Welcome Home, one of my top five lines from Cartabella, Welcome Home. You can see I have doubles, <laughs> doubles of this, just a beautiful, beautiful collection. I will literally cry when I'm done with this <laughs> collection. Yeah, maybe I'll have to buy one next year. But anyways, this is what I'm going to do because in this collection, there is a lot of gray and there's a lot of this buffalo uh, this black and white buffalo check and my little girl loves that of course it's very popular now especially with the farmhouse and she's not into farmhouse but she likes that look and she likes gray so there will be a lot of elements in this collection that will go perfect now I decided I pulled out the collection I knew I had this flare and I thought okay well what do I do now and I was like hmm I don't know so what did I do you know what I did. I went to Scrap Spin, baby. <laughs> yes, I did. I went to Scrap Spin. I asked Siri to give me five numbers from 1 to 92. She gave them to me. And what did she tell me to pick? Well, she told me to pick thickers, and so I did that. And so when I went and picked my thickers, I don't know how my page is going to turn out, so I picked a variety. I only picked three. And because of one of the other supplies she gave me, I picked this one in a banner. I picked a script font, and then I picked one that's a little lighter gray. I, just a very quick process, but I knew I wanted more than one choice because I don't know which direction my two-page layout will be. I'm not quite sure what my title's going to be, so I wanted to have a variety. So thickers was one. And then the next thing was circle punches. Well, again, this is another quick supply for me. So what did I do? I went to my shelf and I pulled my punch bag and has all my circle punches. Yes, every one of my circle punches is here. Isn't that lovely? Yes. And I will have a video linked below where I talked about that. So that was easy. So then the next thing that my lovely little Siri gave me, what do you think it was? Distressing. And I thought, oh. Oh no, oh no, oh no. So what I did was I grabbed one of my fingernail files. This is just something I use for distressing. I could have pulled out my Close to My Heart distressor or my Heidi Swap one, but this was handy. It was in my tool caddy. I pulled it. I think I may do something with that distressing, something I haven't done for a while. So hold on to that one. I may do that. Then the next thing she gave me was twine. And so I picked black and white only because, what did I do with it, of what my photos told me to do and I had said this in one of my other videos that when I'm picking supplies and I have a ton of photos different colors this and that I just pick one and then I go with just that one when I'm picking supplies and I use this one of my little girl and she had that black and white tweed coat on so that is why I picked black and white twine and plus she loves black and white twine twine because of that black and white check so then the last thing the siri gave me because she knows uh my favorite supply and she loves me is she gave me breads <laughs> yes i mean there was 
a really good assortment. So uh, I picked my bread box. So I have everything sitting there with all of those circle punches, all of those breads, and a distressor twine. And what was the other thing? Oh, thickers. So uh, easy supplies. I don't really have to think too hard as to how to use those supplies. So, that, so that's fun. And then, of course, this distressor. Hmm. Well, I'll have to distress photos or my papers or something. Maybe I'll find some embellishments to distress. I'll get it on there somehow because that was the technique prompt, you know, a challenge. And then I need a direction. I need a springboard. And this is what we're going to talk about next because those are the supplies. Honestly, it took me just a couple minutes to get those supplies. It took me longer to take the wrapper off this We Are Memory Keepers twine than it did anything else. Yes, you, was, you would think I was breaking into Fort Knox as long as it took me. It literally took me longer to pull that wrapper off than pull the rest of those supplies. Oh, funny how that happens. So that is what I'm going to do as far as scrap spin. Very, very quick process to pull your supplies. So I needed a direct of course I have that lovely little flare not gonna go far and so I thought okay well I need a springboard I'm gonna do two-page sketch what did I do and I had my Laura Whitaker sketchbook just here to my right so I picked this sketch now let's talk about the sketch for a minute because I'm doing a two-page layout so then why would I pick a one-page sketch and it only has three photos and I'm gonna have 14 so how do I translate this sketch to a two page. And so this was something that my mom had to teach me way back in the day because my mom is a seamstress by trade. And whenever we would go to the fabric stores and we would pick out patterns because she used to make some of our clothes. And if I, whatever was on the front of the package, if I didn't like the color, if I didn't like it, I'd say, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. And she would say to me, don't look at the color, look at the design. And it took me a long time. But finally, you know, when I was little, it finally dawned on me what she was meaning. And she would say, no, look at this, look at this. Don't look at the color. Don't look at the pattern of what this lady's wearing. Look at the design of the dress. So that's exactly what I'm going to say to you. Don't look at exactly everything that's here. Don't look at these three photos. I want you to look at the design. And so the design is a very simple design and can be easily translated to a two-page layout. Now, how is that? Because look at the header up here. Very, very simple. I can put that on the left, put one on the right, call it good. And down here, I can have a shelf or a base uh, at the bottom of my page. And then I can put uh, seven photos. Right here's three. I can put another four up here. This is all empty space. Space, and then I simply will come over here and do the same thing on the right. So I'm going to have a header and a shelf and in between I'm going to mingle those 12 to 14 photos. And the, all my photos are wallets so I can get some on there. So that is how I'm taking this one page sketch of Laura's with only three photos and translating it into a two page. So don't be afraid to limit yourself that you have all of your sketches in one say don't have them all in one category well this is a one page or this is a two page because then you limit your options okay and Nancy Joe and I have been talking about that and I may be talking about that in a 15 minute mixer coming up about maybe reorganizing how you have your sketches hmm, interesting stuff so that is how I'm going to take this sketch and translate it to a two page and you see that design is very very simple what is a little bit not simple is how Laura has her cluster bases. And so, you know, we'll be playing with that. Love playing with cluster bases. And hopefully in April, there will be another uh, clustering video coming up. That's the plan anyways. Yes, I'm trying to work about six weeks ahead. <sighs> sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't. Okay, so that is how I'm going to start the page. Come back with a flip of the page and you will see how I'm going to finish this layout. Okay, hold on. Okay, I'm back with my finished two-page spread. Using the load prompt, there's no place like home. And of course, you can see I got that flare right there. There's no place like home, which is absolutely perfect for this load prompt. And then it's perfect where it is because it's right beside my little one. And she is where I feel most at home with. <laughs> yes, my little one. So uh, one thing I wanted to say, there will be a load event coming up in May. You can absolutely uh, pay the $50 and attend the load event and get some layout ideas, some story ideas or you can become a scrap happy member and then those load events are included in your yearly membership 
information is listed below if you're interested if not just always pop in here i'm always doing a load prompt somewhere uh in the year okay so now how long did this two page layout uh, take me because a couple people have been asking questions like that and so for this two page layout it took me about one and a half hours which isn't very uh bad of course i was watching a video so probably wouldn't have took that long <laughs> but i get easily distracted i was watching a video and so that's what about 45 minutes per page not bad especially since i got 12 photos on there yes <laughs> absolutely okay so now let's talk about scrap spin for a minute so where did my scrap spin supplies Whew. Yes, where did they land on my layout? So my one scrap spin supply was thickers. And of course, they landed right there for my title. Very easy. Circle punches did not make the cut, and that's okay. But the fact that they were out and about, I needed them for another home project. So actually, it was for my planner. So that worked out really well, really well. I was tickled about that. Didn't have to look very far for my punches. The distressing absolutely landed on my photos and my journaling cards i'll be talking about that in just a minute because i'm going to do a little mini tutorial about using distressing on your photos a very very fun technique and then of course the twine made it in here on some bows and then my braids yes 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 <laughs> my braids love my braids okay so now let's talk about the sketch to the layout because you can definitely see that Laura's sketch was the influence for my page. So I will put her uh, layout or her sketch here beside my layout. Okay, so you can see that uh, where Laura had her header, and that's where mine landed. Where she had her um, I have a little pointer, where she had her cluster, that's exactly where I put it, and then her shelf. That's exactly what I did. I built a shelf and then I just moved mine down a tad because I had more photos because where uh, Laura has her three, I have three, but then I added additional. Okay. So basically it's the same thing. I just added more photos. So that's how you can take a one page sketch and turn it into a two page because what I did on the left is what I did on the right. <laughs> yes, I did. So of course you can see here again, the same header, but now instead of the embellishment cluster being on the left, since this is the right page, I put my embellishment cluster here on the right. And then, of course, you see where she has this big cluster here. That's exactly where I put it. I just skipped this one, okay? Because you see on my left page, I didn't put a cl cluster there. I skipped that. Because I'm doing a two-page spread, I don't need a visual triangle always when I do a pa two-page spread. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. No rule about that. And so then again, where she had those three photos on a shelf, I did the exact same thing. It's just I slid it down a tad because I got more photos on there. Yes, so you can definitely see I use Laura's sketch as an inspiration and springboard and just everything else for this layout. Yes, so you can definitely take a one, uh, you know, one page sketch and easily easily turn it into a two page just sometimes you may have to take away one cluster or just move a cluster that's all you basically have to do and sometimes you adjust for uh, how many photos you want so now let's talk about photos for a minute i think i've got to take a deep breath <sighs> yeah <laughs> sometimes i have to do that my mind goes much faster than my body can take me yes okay so in laura's sketch she has three photos, okay? So you would say, okay, for a two-page spread, that would give you six. No, I have 12. <laughs> yes, I do. And right here's five, and right here's four, seven. Okay, so that's 12. But then I have two journaling cards or cut-apart cards that came from the collection. So that means, really, there could have been 14. But then, really, if you look at it, you could have put another photo here. Let me move this for a minute. You could have put another photo here, and you could have put another photo right here so that means you could have took Laura's sketch of three and turned it into a two page and got 16 photos that's what I'm talking about that's how you record the story yes because this is a spanning a couple years uh, my little girl uh, getting things for her home someday and so I love that just by adjusting a, a sketch I moved that shelf down gave me more room up here because if you look at the sketch when you see this empty space, two page gals, this is what we need to pay attention to. When you see all this empty space on a one page sketch, that is photos, 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 all that empty, just visualize photos, okay? That's how I do it. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, the embellishment clusters because Laura had three on her layout. I had, I just skipped the one that was here because I really only have four clusters here, here, 
here and here. So basically my clusters are on the outside frame of my two page layout because my emphasis is on, I'll cover, see if you can do that. My emphasis is on my photos. Yes. And that's what I wanted to, that's what I wanted the focus to be because I didn't just have three photos. I had 12 <laughs> and I wanted to use them all. And I did very happy with that. Okay. Now you'll see in this uh, layout that there was a couple spaces because of my photos weren't all the same size or not all three and a half by uh, two and a half by three and a half. They're all different sizes. It's whatever I cut them down to. And then what I did was take small pieces of scraps and I covered in anything that was like a little bit of a trap space. So right here's one. I put a sticker here to fill in that space. And then over here on the right, I took another little small scrap again and filled in those little spaces. And that's just what I do sometimes. It's like a fake little grid. I just fill it in with a sticker or a piece of scrap because I had that laying here. So now if you look at my layout, I really don't have a lot of pattern paper. I mean, there's, there's pattern paper. There's several pattern papers, but they're in small amounts because up here to top, three different pieces of pattern paper, very small amounts. Down here on the shelf, another three different pieces of paper, small amount. And again, same thing on the right, very small amounts of pattern paper. Did not take very many supplies. You absolutely could use this sketch and do a two page layout and all use nothing but scraps. Yes, ex except for your background, a piece, of course. But all of that, scraps, scraps, even your clusters, scraps, scraps. Now, on my uh, layout, I basically used, I have doilies, of course, but I basically used my sticker sheet. Uh, for my embellishments. Basically, the only thing I think I added was, of course, my doilies. Of course, I had to do with home. Yeah, it'd be nice if doilies came with a sticker sheet. <laughs> yes. And then, of course, I added um, my two photo corners, but uh, that to me is a finishing touch. And of course, my flare that I added. But, you know, the brads and the twine, that was all part of my scrap spin. So very, very happy with how that turned out. Now, I did want to say about one sticker that came from my sticker sheet. And that's over here at my title because my title says home planning, but my home, the word home, that came from the sticker sheet. So sometimes when you're doing your titles, look for stickers on your sticker sheets that will help emphasize and maybe add to your title. So my title is now home planning rather than just planning. And of course, that idea came from the Cartabella sticker sheet. Yes, love that. Okay, so now let's talk about this distressing and photos. And I had one laying here. What did I do with it? Okay, so let me move this for a minute. Because what I simply did was, this is just a fingernail file. Uh, came from Sally's Beauty Salon, uh, salon years ago. Uh, they hold up very well. And so, uh, whenever I had my photos cut down, I would just take simply, I mean, quick, quick. <laughs> And it's very fun, but you want to do it away from your layout because you'll get a little bit of residue because basically what we're doing is distressing, but really it's sanding. So what we're doing is just taking this file and you're going to simply, you're going to uh, sand the edges of your photo. And what you're doing is you are basically creating yourself a white photo mat instantly. <laughs> yes, without having the addition. And I'll show you here in just a minute. This is just a leftover photo and I'll show you here down at the bottom because that'll show up because this is a darker part of the photo. But you see how you get all these little, um, uh, little, uh, what am I going to call them? Little, um, oh, somebody give me a word. Yes. <laughs> You're going to get little pieces, okay? So you're going to, um, you don't want to do that over your layout because you're going to get some residue there, okay? So you see what that does is that gives you, uh, it sands the ink off of your photo and exposes your white photo paper. That's exactly what you're doing, but it looks like you're giving yourself a white mat, the entire uh, perimeter of your photo. Yes. Now you can do it two ways. You can just simply just rub it back and forth. Okay. But see, you get that residue. Okay. I know there's a word for that. <laughs> Somebody yell it. I can't think of it. Um, so you can just do it small, a little bit at a time. If you're not used to this, that's what I would recommend. Just do a little bit at a time, or you can simply just run it back and forth. Okay. 
and you'll get that you'll get it much quicker so it's up to you no wrong way to do that now i will tell you the only thing that will happen when you do this of course you get this residue you got to be careful about that you have to wipe off your photos because that residue is still in your photos and then the other thing is your photos will not look straight because the sanding will not be even around your photos so don't think there's something wrong with your photo it's just that's the wonkiness sometimes of sanding it makes your photo look crooked but it really isn't and the other thing is too sometimes if you get hot and heavy i'm going to show you what happens okay you can absolutely scratch your photos so I don't know if that'll pick up so when you're doing this make sure you're only using the edge because if you get hot and heavy you're gonna scratch your photo where you didn't want to scratch okay sanding and scratching is two different things so you have to be aware of that but you can go as wide look at this we'll just go as wide as we want now, if this is a hair, uh, an heirloom photo or a special photo, I wouldn't recommend this, <laughs> but this, these are just digital prints, okay? So you can even give yourself, instead of just this uh, clean little white line around, you can even distress it and give itself a more heavy distress. So play around with your photos. I just like the white mat, and I will show you what that looks like on my page. But that is how you distress or sand your photos. And if you look on my layout, it even my journaling cards, I did the same thing because all you're doing is going to expose that inner core of that cardstock. And so you can see it looks like every one of my photos has this little, little thin mat around. Just add something to it, okay? I love the look of that. I haven't done it for a while, so it was nice to get that scrap spin supply of distressing. And so that's what I did. Every one of those photos and my two journaling cards, I took that file and distressed them, okay? So that is my two-page layout. Very happy with how it turned out. Of course, I covered my braids in the back. I covered them with washi paper. And that is how it turned out. Love getting my braids on there. Love getting that flare on there that says there's no place like home, which is very fitting. And I love the load prompt because it prompted me to uh, go through my uh, desktop and get these photos that I've been taking of all the items that my little one has been getting for her home someday. You know how we always did that. Um, what do we call them? Uh, hope chest. Yes. Um, yes, we started hope chest for her a long time ago. And so, of course, now the hope chest is turning into reality because she's going to need things for her home someday. So um, not in a hurry for that to happen. But, you know, life goes on. Absolutely. So that's all I have for today for this uh, start to finish. Love how it turned out. Love that I did another two-page layout. I'm surprised how many two-page layouts that I have been doing this load event. But to me, if it, if I have a lot of photos, I'm going to do a two-page. If I have one, I'll do a one-page one layout. I do not have any specifications as if I'm, if I'm doing a one or two. It's all about recording the story, however many it takes. If it takes four, it takes four. If it takes six, six. If it's one, it's one. Yes, absolutely. So that's all I have for today. And uh, come back to RTS because you never know what we're going to learn. Bye.